Hi, my name is Sam Cusimano, and welcome to this MIDI Sprout tutorial. Today, we will be continuing to build our MIDI Sprout kit. In our second session of the three-part series, we saw how to construct the galvanometer circuit out of a 555 timer. We additionally tested that 555 timer. Make sure to disconnect power between the batteries and the breadboard before continuing to assemble these next steps. Take the 328P chip and remove it from the anti-static foam. You may find that integrated circuits sometimes have the pins flayed out, making it hard to fit into the circuit board evenly. Be careful when inserting chips into circuit boards. If the pins do not fit in easily, rest the chip on its side against a flat surface like a table and press very gently. This will bend the pins in a very, very tiny bit. If you accidentally bend any of the pins of your IC in too far, be very careful when bending them out. Identify pin 1 of the AT Mega chip by the small dot and notch at the top of the chip. Match pin 1 of the chip up to column E, row 1, on your breadboard. Insert the chip between columns E and column F. Next, we'll insert a power jumper for the AT Mega. Here, in row 7, column A, and attach the jumper over to the positive bus on the left hand side. Next we're going to attach a ground connection from row 8. I'm going to put this in column B and attach it over to again the negative jumper on the left hand side. Be very careful and be very specific about the polarity of your positive and your negative connections into the chip. Next, we're going to connect an additional power connection on the right-hand side of the chip. Here, we're going to go between row 9, column J, and the positive bus on the right-hand side. We're now going to attach another ground again to the right hand side of the chip here in row 7 column J and attached into the ground bus on the right hand side. Again be very careful make sure that your ground is attached to ground and your power is attached to power. We don't want to have cross connections. Next, we're going to connect our output pin from the 555 timer up to the AT Mega chip. Take one of the longer jumper wires if you have some in your kit. Go between output pin 3, here is row 29. I'm going to insert into column B. It's a little tight down here with all the other connections. And bring it up to the uh, AT Mega digital input pin. Here we're going to have it be in uh, pin 4, row 4, column D. This sends the pulse signal from the galvanometer into the chip, which then translates those pulses into MIDI signal. Next we're going to connect our potentiometer. The potentiometer has a few options when you're attaching it to the solderless breadboard. There are some metal tabs that stick out on the bottom, which are used as strain relief when attaching it to circuit boards. And there's the three pins, which are the electrical connections for the 
a potentiometer. I sometimes like to bend the pins in different ways in order to have them attached to boards. Specifically, if I take a guitar pick, here an old guitar pick from George's Music in Spring City, and I push down on these pins, I can bend the tabs in that are on the side of the potentiometer just to kind of get them out of my way. With those tabs bent down, I can then try and bend out the pins so they stick out horizontally. This allows me to stick the potentiometer vertically into the breadboard. It makes it easier to stick into the breadboard as well as control the different values. This potentiometer is going to be our threshold control for the MIDI sprout. I'm going to insert this into column A, rows 19, 20, and 21. The wiper is in row 20, which is what we're going to be connecting to the analog input in our ATmega328 chip. We're going to now connect a jumper wire between that wiper on row 20 from the potentiometer up to analog input 0 in the 328P chip. Uh, we're going to connect this jumper up to row 6 column G on the right hand side of the breadboard. Next we're going to insert our MIDI jack into the breadboard. The MIDI jack is a pretty large piece, uh, but all of the pins fit perfectly uh, and they're spaced mating into the solderless breadboard. You'll see these two kind of sharp spikes that sit in the front. These are used for strain relief. Be careful and bend those pins slightly outward. That way the MIDI jack will sit flat against the breadboard. We want to connect the pins, there's five of them, into the breadboard between columns I and J on the right hand side. Have the topmost pin go into row 18, which ends up with the middle pin falling into row 21. Push down, and it should seat into the breadboard fairly easily. Next, we want to connect our data pin that's going to be doing the transmission of information uh, between the 328 chip and the MIDI output. This is going to be the TX or transmit pin uh, for the serial output on that 328P chip. Add a jumper over here between column B, uh, row 3, which is the transmit out, down to row 23, column F, which attaches to the MIDI DIN jack. We now want to add a resistor to power the MIDI DIN jack. Take one of these seven 220 ohm resistors this is the only one of the seven we're going to be using to build this particular kit. And we want to make a small connection between MIDI and the power bus. Bend the leads of the resistor into a U-shape and now make a connection between row 19, here I'm going to use column H, and the power pin, uh, the power bus on the right hand side. Make sure that you put the resistor into the power bus and not the negative. So again we're going between row 19 column H connecting to the MIDI jack and then jumping up to the power bus here. Next, we'll be connecting the center pin, the negative pin, of the MIDI jack to ground. 
connect a jumper between row 21 and the ground bus on the right hand side of your breadboard. Next we're going to have a jumper going from the potentiometer to positive voltage. The potentiometer is being set up as a voltage divider. One side will go to positive voltage and one side will go to ground. That will leave the center pin, the wiper, to divide the voltage across that resistance. Here I'm going to connect a jumper between row 19 and the positive bus on the left hand side of the board. Next, we add a jumper between row 21, which is the opposite side of the potentiometer, and the ground bus over on the left hand side. The next five steps consist of adding the LEDs. Each LED has a longer leg which is positive and a shorter leg that connects to the ground bus. If you have a CR2032 battery, you can test each LED and determine the color of it. Otherwise, simply add each LED to your MIDI Sprout kit and once you're powered on, you'll see what all your colors are in case you want to rearrange them for certain aesthetic considerations. Attach the first, or red, LED to column A, row 5, and the ground bus. Connect the next LED, yellow, to row 11 and the ground bus, again connecting the positive leg to row 11 and the negative to ground. Next, attach the green LED to row 12 and the ground bus. On the right hand side, row 12 to ground. Next, let's attach the blue LED between row 14, now here on the right hand side of the chip, and the ground bus. Make sure that you use the right row to attach to the ground bus on the right hand side. And finally, the last LED will be the white LED, which goes between row 13, again on the right hand side, and the ground bus. Those are all the primary LED connections for the MIDI Sprout. The last component to insert is the 16 megahertz oscillator. You might have to bend the legs in just a little tiny bit in order to fit between rows 9 and 10 on the left hand side of the IC. Next, let's power the MIDI Sprout on and see if everything's working. Now, carefully plug the red positive end of the battery pack into the positive bus. As soon as we attach the negative ground side to the ground bus, the system should boot on and give us a small light show. Excellent. All the LEDs lit, showing us the MIDI Sprout is operational. Attach the electrodes to the eighth inch input connector and touch the button inputs to make a light show on your MIDI Sprout. Attach a MIDI device and begin monitoring the output of your Sprout through a computer. I hope you've enjoyed this build. Join us on our MIDI Sprout forum for more information and to ask questions. Thank you very much.